And now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king! One! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Hello. Hi, Chuck. Oh, you bet I've heard the news about the big contest. Am I? Say, I sure am entering. I'm going to try to win one of those Schwinn auto cycles tonight. Listen, fellas and girls, if you hurry, you too have a chance to win a beautiful new Schwinn Deluxe Auto Cycle, the world's finest bike. Quaker Pop Wheat and Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, are offering 101 fully equipped Schwinn bikes in the easiest, most fun contest ever. Listen for full details later on. For some weeks, things had been comparatively quiet in the town of Three Falls. Constable Mitchell didn't know it, but this was like the calm that comes before the storm. It began with a shot in the night. Did he get away? Got away is right. I didn't even get a clear look at him. And look at the money drawer. Smashed open and empty. The owner of the general store was robbed. The drawer where he kept his cash lay smashed and empty. Uh, here, Jackson, you've helped me before. Uh, what can I do, Mitchell? Look, this playing card was half hit by the cash drawer. A playing card, huh? The Ace of Diamonds. Does that mean something, Constable? Means something. Means plenty. Means that one of the worst killers in the Yukon Territory has come to Three Falls. Means we got the Red Ace here among us. Red Ace. Sam is lucky to be alive. Red Ace. That was the beginning. 24 hours later, in the dead of night, the constable was awakened by a frantic voice and a heavy pounding on his door. Constable! Constable! Con constable! Pierre, what's the matter? Pierre, constable, come quick. It's robbery. It's like last night. Confound it, another robbery? Did you find a plate? This. This playing card I find. Yeah, the same as before. The calling card of the Red Ace. I'll be with you in a minute. Two robberies, but that was not all. On the third night, the Red Ace struck again. This time, it was murder. Old Hard Rock Larson wasn't found until next morning. A knife had been used. His sack of gold dust, accumulated by years of hard toil, was gone. And in its place... Another playing card. Another Ace of Diamonds. Red Ace again, huh, Constable? Jackson. Three robberies and a murder. That's bad enough. But what riles me is the way this Red Ace leaves his calling card. As if he wanted to brag about his work. And uh, still no clues, eh? Well, maybe I'll have something today. How's that? I've sent a man to Dawson to find the Mountie and try to get a description of the Red Ace. Ah, I see. It'll help a lot to know what the killer looks like. Hey, you folks, I'll have you clear out of here now. There's nothing more to see. Get out of poor old Hard Rock's room. Go on now, get out of here. Go on home. At noon that day, Constable Mitchell and his wife, Kate, were having dinner in their home with their friend Chester Jackson as a guest. Can I have some more coffee, Mr. Jackson? No, no, thank you. Well, have you had any word from the Mountie in Dawson? Not yet, Jackson. About time left he got back from there, isn't it? He'll be along. I figured he'd get here soon afternoon. And it'll help a lot if we can get a description of the Red Ace. It's pretty hard to get a man when you don't know who you're looking for. Old Hard Rock killed and robbed last night. Pierre robbed the night before. Sam the night before that. Ah, worrying won't help, Mitch. We we'll just have to take things as they come. Jackson will help you all he can. You bet I will, Mitch. You can count on me. Yes. There's times when a man sure appreciates a friend like you. Oh, now I you... mean it. You've stuck to me through thick and thin ever since I was made constable. I declare when I get ready to step out, I'm going to try to persuade you to take a job as lawman in my place. And if this red ace keeps on, I'll be ready to step out real soon. 
The door, Yeah, Jim. maybe Lefty's got back from Dawson. Yeah, I'll see. Hi, Constable. Here, Lefty. Glad you're back. Here, come on in here. Did you find out anything about the Red Ace? I got a description of the critter. It's right here in my pocket. Could have got a lot more by sticking around, but thought I'd better get back here as you were waiting for me. Here's the description. Oh, you yes. said you could have learned more by waiting around? Yeah. The man I talked to said Sergeant Preston knew all about the Red Ace, but was out of town, and no one knew when he'd be back. Yeah, this may help. Well, that's just a handbill that was sent out about a year ago when the Red Ace was working up in the north. Yes, I remember hearing about him up there. Hey, Jackson. Yes? Listen to this. Tell me who it sounds like. You mean it sounds like someone you know? Now, just listen. What? Height, six feet, four inches. Heavily built. Four. Dark eyes. Dark. Hair black and coarse. Oh, Prince Scott. That's Mr. Grogan. Grizzly Grogan. That's what I thought, Constable. The description fits him to a T. Hold on, Mitch. Hold on. Grogan's been living here in Three Falls for the past two months. The Red Ace did most of his work north of here. Well, what of it? I'll bet odds there's been nothing heard about the Red Ace north of here since Grizzly Grogan came to town. Well, I can't believe it. Of course, I haven't seen much of Mr. Grogan, but he always struck me as a harmless thought. Well... I'm going to have a talk with Grizzly Grogan. I aim to find out what he has to say for himself. Oh, wait, Mitch. Huh? Just a second. If Grizzly is the Red Ace, talking to him won't get you anywhere. Well, what do you suggest, Jackson? The Red Ace has struck every one the last three nights, and generally around midnight or later. Let's wait till tonight. Go to that shack where he lives. Maybe if we watch around there, we can catch him in the act of committing another crime. That sounds like a smart idea. Yes, maybe so. We'll follow your advice. Lefty, you go along with us. Yeah. It'll sure be a feather in our caps to catch the Red Ace. It was supper time when Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, returned to Dawson from a short trip. They were welcomed by a Mountie named Emery. Good to get back, eh, kid? How'd you find the travel, Sergeant? Not bad. Supper will be ready in just about a minute. You can sit right down. And we can do it justice, can't we, King? <laughs> I'll take care of you too, King. Anything happen while we were gone? No, nothing important. That is nothing but a visitor from Three Falls. Oh? What do you want? He was just asking questions about the Red Ace. The Red Ace? I never heard of the character, so there wasn't much I could tell him. Well, I could tell him plenty about that killer. He operated north of here. At every one of his crimes, he left an ace of diamonds as a calling card. So I learned. I looked through my old handbills and found one from a year ago. Describe the man in his method. I see. Evidently, you haven't had any recent reports from headquarters. Who wanted the information? Local constable at Three Falls, Mitchell. Why? Well, he said the Red Ace had been operating in Three Falls. Struck three times in the last three nights. That changes my plans. I've got to pull out of here right away. Tonight? Right now. One King. Where are you going? King and I are headed for Three Falls, and we're starting right away. Can't you even take time for supper? No, we'll have to travel in the dark. It'll be slow going. Moreover, a storm's coming. I want to cover as much ground as possible before it hits. Oh, uh, come to the kitchen while I pack some food, and I'll tell you what I know about the Red Ace. While Sergeant Preston and his dog, King, headed south, Constable Mitchell, accompanied by his volunteer aides, Chester Jackson and Lefty, made their way toward the shack where Grizzly Grogan lived. Oh, Mitch, the place is lighted. You suppose we'll find the big fellow there? We'll blame soon, no. Well, come on in, Jackson. Hey, look there. That pouch on the shelf. Yeah. If that's Hard Rock's gold dust pouch, we'll have a pretty good case against Grogan. Well, is it? Let's see. Here's his name. Yeah. That just about does it. And yeah, look here. Playing cards. Several packs of them. Look at the back. The same pattern as on the Red Aces. We've got to find Grogan. The sooner the better. Now, wait just a second before you leave. Yeah. See something on the table? Yeah, writing supplies, paper and pencils. Might be a letter or two. We'll have a look. Yeah, what's that you got? I don't know. I, well, let's see here. A list of names with some of them crossed out. Why, that ornery, cold-blooded, murdering polecat. Take a look at this, Mitch. He's made a list of the people he aims to rob. Yeah. First is Sam at the general store. Then Pierre. Then Hard Rock Larson, and then... Mark Kendall's restaurant. He's crossed off the first tree. We'd better go and warn Mark Kendall. It's a good idea. On the way to her home, we can pass the restaurant, make sure everything's all right. Right. Well, let's go. Let's get over there right away. 
Ma Kendall was one of the best-loved women in town. Her spick-and-span restaurant was a little place, but there was always a sizable amount of money in the till. The constable and Jackson were followed by Lefty as they approached the front door of Mark Kendall's darkened establishment. There's no lights in there. The Red Ace works without lights. Remember Pierre's place. Yeah, that's right. I... Jackson, look. Am I seeing things or is that door standing part open? What? Well, you're not seeing things, Mitch. It is part open. And unless I'm mistaken, there's someone crouching just inside the door. You see that dark shadow? I sure do. Hey, you in there. Mitchell, is that you? That's Grogan. I'm calling on you to surrender, Grogan. So you're the Red Ace. We've got you flat-footed. Hey, who's the Red Ace? Why, you you better surrender, Grogan. We're taking you in for robbery and murder. Well, all the frame-ups. Let's go get him. That suits me. I'll take all three of you. I'll let him have it, the big grizzly. Jackson, put the gun down. But he's a killer. I want him alive. I'll get you. Oh, oh, all right, hold it. Hold it, I'll hit him. The giant closed in to take on all three of the opponents in a battle to the finish. <laughs> We'll continue our story in just a moment. Gosh, imagine winning a bike like this. A Schwinn auto cycle. Gee, what a beauty. What's more, kids, Quaker popped wheat and rice, a swell-tasting breakfast cereal shot from guns, are offering 101 of these Schwinn deluxe auto cycles in a contest that's easier than falling off a log. More fun than a barrel of monkeys. Each bike is fully equipped, each worth more than $79. I'll bet they go like the wind. Yes, and look here, Billy. For quick, safe stops, Bikes have these hand-operated, front and rear, fast-stopping expander brakes. Golly, look at the built-in fender light. And say, what's this button? It's a horn. Boy, they've got everything. A bike pilot compass and, and look, a Stuart Warner Golden Meteor speedometer. That keen, shiny new maroon model with the ivory trim is for boy winners. And are these special, lovely blue models for girl winners? Right, Sandra. And the grand prize winner also gets this handy Xena Zenet radio for his or her bike. Now listen carefully. Here's how easy it is to try for one of these bikes. Just finish this sentence in 15 additional words or less. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package is... To finish that sentence, just pick up a package of Quaker puffed wheat or rice. Look at the back of the package. On the back, you'll find a series of colorful flags. Simply pick out your favorite and tell us why you like it. Well, how about giving us an example? Sure. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package is Notre Dame. I like it because Notre Dame has swell football teams. Or could you say, I like the Pennsylvania flag because its colors, red and blue, are my favorite colors. Right. That's all there is to it. Just a few simple words of your own may win you a fully equipped Schwinn auto cycle. So hurry, jot your entry down on a piece of paper. Include your name and address, printed plainly. Mail with one box top from any package of Quaker puffed wheat or rice. Send to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. And you don't send any money? No siree. Just attach one box top from Quaker puffed wheat or rice to each entry. Mail at once to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now to continue our story. Just before Grizzly Grogan closed in with his huge fist swinging, Constable Mitchell gave the word that there should be no gunplay. I want the Red Ace alive. Beneath the onslaught of the constable's hard fist, Grogan's knees began to buckle and his eyes went glassy. Then he slumped to the floor. In his semi-conscious state, he heard the lawman saying, yeah, That does it. I guess I'll put the Red Ace out of business. We ought to finish him right here on the spot. Oh, let the law deal with him, Jackson. I'll put the bracelets on him. We'll take him to the jail. When Grizzly Grogan regained consciousness, he found himself in the small jail room. Constable Mitchell was on the other side of the barred door, while beyond his window, the storm had broken. The rain fell steadily. I've been waiting for you to come conscious, Grogan. We caught you red-handed. You were about to steal Mark Kendall's cash. Uh, ooh, uh, me? Oh, no, wait a minute. I, I didn't go there to steal no cash. I, I, I went there to get the Red Asia. What's that? Well, I had a letter, a note signed by a friend telling me the Red Ace aimed to steal more Kendall's cash tonight. I, I went there and the door was open, so I was waiting. You expect me to believe that? Well, that's the truth, Constable. Where's the note? Well, I... I, I, 
got it right here in my pocket. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. I expect it is gone. If it ever existed. Huh? Oh, that won't do, Grogan. We've got you hands down. You fit the description of the Red Ace to start with. In the second place, we found no end of evidence in your shack. And on top of that, you fought like a cornered bear when you saw us closing in on you. Now, wait, I... Now, uh... You can make things easier for yourself and everyone concerned by signing a confession. No. I've got it all written out here. Slide it through the bars of your cell. You can think it over between now and when I see you in the morning. Here you are. Hey, but, Constable, I, I'm not the Red Ace. Do you hear me? I said I'm not the Red Ace. There's a pile of evidence, Brogan, and it all calls you a liar. Uh, Brogan sat alone with his thoughts for some time. He read the confession by the light of a lamp that burned in the room beyond his cell. Shook his head slowly, stupidly. Not able to comprehend the sudden sequence of events. He lost all track of time. Then suddenly he was startled from his thoughts by a soft metallic sound. Uh. On the floor beside his bunk there lay a key that someone had tossed through a small barred window. A note was tied to the key with a bit of string. Watch this. Don't let them hang you. Use this key and get away. Gosh, that, that's how it is, huh? Let me see what else this note says. Keep going and be careful of the Maudis. <laughs> yeah. The lock turned easily. Rogan was free. stepped out into the pelting rain, but up returning to his shack, without a backward glance, he hurried north on foot. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, had traveled through the night despite the driving rain. Both man and dog were drenched to the skin. They were tired and cold, but they pushed on. The rain stopped falling at dawn, and then a mist swirled and eddied, almost concealing the fast-moving stream filled to the brim with flood water. The Mountie had followed the south bank for some distance. We ought to find that big rock pretty soon, King. It's a landmark. When we get there, we cut due south. Three falls. Oh, here we are, King. Here's the rock. And there's the bridge crossing to the north bank. You're looking at something on the other side of the creek. What is it, King? King had caught the scent of fear. Though the far side of the bridge was shrouded by the heavy mist, King knew that someone was on the opposite bank of the stream. The voice that came out of the fog was edged with panic. Uh, I saw you coming downstream through a rip in the fog. I know you're after me, but I won't be taken. Who are you? I'm not the Red Ace, see? I'm not a killer. No one's going to frame me. The Red Ace. I want to talk to you. Oh, no. Stay where you are, mister. Stay on your side of the bridge. I'm warning you. I've worked on that bridge. I've weakened it. No one's going to get me. I'm coming over there. Oh, no, you can't do it. Take him, King. No, 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 no. I'm coming, King. Sergeant Preston knew King would keep the other man from bringing a gun into play. He started across the bridge. He was in the middle. When the weakened structure began to sway and then to buckle. There was a splintering. Then the bridge went down. King turned from Grogan. Uh, where, where are you? King, King. The great dog knew from Preston's voice that his master was in difficulty. Without a second's hesitation, he leaped into the water. The Mountie had been sucked down by the undertow. He bobbed to the surface and saw his dog nearby. King! King! Here, boy! Here, King! Let me... Let me hang on your harness. That's it. Sure, King! Sure! The great dog struggled bravely, fighting the rushing current with Sergeant Preston clinging to his harness. Then help came from an unexpected source. Grogan appeared out of the fog, swimming strongly. I'll, I'll help you. Come on, dog. We'll get him ashore in no time. Between the man and King, Sergeant Preston was soon out of the water and on the south bank of the stream. It's all right, King. It's all right now, boy. You were pretty close to being knocked out. I'll be all right. You had a good chance to kill me. Ah, uh, doggone it. I'm no killer. I believe that. And I know you're not the Red Ace. My name's Grogan. Everyone calls me Grizzly. I tell you, Sergeant, I was framed in three falls. You're about the size of the Red Ace. I, I tell you, I'm not that critter. I'm not the Red Ace. I know that, Gogan. That's why I came down here from Dawson when I heard about the Red Ace. Uh, 
The Red Ace has been dead for the past two months. Dead? You, you mean that, mister? I know that for a fact. He was executed by the law. Well, someone in Three Falls is leaving playing cards at his murders, and whoever it is, he, he did a good job of framing me. That's why I lit out, and I'll tell you all about it. With the simplicity of a child, Big Grizzly Grogan told how he'd received a note telling him to go to Mark Kendall's place and lie in wait for the Red Ace. How he'd attacked the constable and his aides, thinking it was they who planned to rob the restaurant. How he had been captured and jailed. Then he told of the evidence that Constable Mitchell had referred to. And from his pocket drew the confession he'd been asked to sign. Uh, th this is it right here, Sergeant. It tells the three robberies and the murder, and I didn't have a hand in any of them. You said you received a note advising you to wait for the Red Ace at Ma Kendall's. Yeah, the, the door was unlocked when I got to the restaurant, so I went in. Where is that note? Well, I don't know. I had it in my pocket. When the constable asked me for it, it was gone, so I couldn't prove my story. Did you recognize the writing? No, it, it was lettered sort of, so I couldn't recognize it. How'd you get out of jail? Well, someone tossed a key into the cell with a note on it. Oh, that note had the same sort of lettering as the other. It told me to clear out. I left the key in the door with a note attached. How could anyone have gotten the key to your cell? Oh, that, that'd be easy. Everyone knows the constable keeps a couple of spare keys in his desk. One more question, Grogan. Yeah? How long were you waiting in Mark Kendall's restaurant? Oh, a couple of hours, I reckon. And there was ample time for someone to plant evidence in your home. Yeah, I guess so. All right, Grogan. We'll go back to town and see if we can make the killer betray himself. Though the morning was well advanced, Constable Mitchell was still raging about the escape of his prisoner. Jackson and Lefty were with him. Every time I think of that big galoot walking right out of this jail while I'm pounding my ear, sound asleep, I get mad all over again. Well, Constable, it proves one thing. The Red Ace had an accomplice. Pack of good it does to know that. The accomplice must have all of the loot. Yes, I guess he has. We went through Grogan's shack without finding any of it. Is that a dog? Yeah. Look out the window. It's a Mountie. Yeah, it looks if he'd been through plenty of rain. Yeah, hi there, Sergeant. Good morning, Constable. My name's Preston, and this is my dog, King. Great day. So you're Sergeant Preston. Well, I'm downright glad to know you. Uh, this is Chester Jackson. Uh, oh, this Sergeant. is Lefty Barnes. How do you you're the man who was in Dawson yesterday. That's right, Sergeant. You were inquiring about the Red Ace. Yes. Sergeant... I had him right here in this jail last night, but he escaped. Oh? What'd you do about it? I did the best we could. Lefty and Jackson and I tried to follow tracks, but the rain had washed them out. How long have you been here in the office? Half an hour or so. And you probably haven't heard the news. I met him not far from town. Uh, what's you that? Him? You'll have no further trouble with the Red Ace. He's dead. What? Oh. Dead? You got him? Dead, huh? Oh, and that reminds me of this pouch here. Uh, what's in there, Sergeant? I promised Grogan I'd see that Sam the storekeeper and a fellow named Pierre got their money back. The loot? Larson's family should be given his gold dust. You mean to say you got back all that stolen loot? It's not unusual for dying criminals to try to make restitution. Will you lock this pouch up in your safe, Constable? Well, yes, but... Then uh, uh, come with me. I'll take you to Grogan. Well, sure, sure thing. Two of us can handle things. We'll not need your helpers. The Constable locked the leather pouch in his safe and then left the office with Sergeant Preston and King. A moment later, Chet Jackson departed to attend to a personal matter. He walked rapidly, obviously disturbed, to the cabin where he lived alone. At the door, he paused and fumbled in his pocket for a key. Mm, that big gorilla. He must have suspected that I wrote the notes. Must have doubled back here and waited till I left my place. Mm, here's the key. Could he have had a key to the door? Mm, might have pried a window open. Soon, no. Jackson crossed the room quickly after carefully closing the door. He crouched to the floor in front of the fireplace and brushed aside the ashes that covered slabs of flat stones. His nervousness increased. His fingers trembled as he felt around the edge of one stone and then lifted it out to expose a hiding place. Sweat beaded his forehead. He reached into the opening and brought out a flour sack. He was so intent on his work that he didn't notice the door opening behind his back. Something in the sack. Dump it out on the floor. The money, it is here. That's what we want. What? Tip your hand, eh, Jackson? You, Preston, you trapped me. Well, I'll get you for that. Get him, King! Oh, oh, I'll take that gun. Take him out, take him out. Oh, that dog will kill me. Oh, King. That, that dog. On your feet, Jackson. Up you come. Well, looks like you got a prisoner, Sergeant. Yes, and a killer. Jackson, 
The evidence in that sack will hang you. Wait, you lied. You said Grogan was dead, and he's not. He's right out there. I said the Red Ace was dead, and that's the truth. Looks like you fell for the old trick, Jackson. When you thought your loot had been found by Grogan, you just couldn't rest until you made sure. All right, you win. The law always wins, Jackson. But why did you follow me here? Why did you suspect me? Because I believed Grogan's story. When he said that the note telling him to go to Ma Kendall's restaurant had been taken from his pocket, I knew that only three men had access to it. The constable, Lefty, and you. Uh, so that's where I made my slip. The constable and I left the office to give you and Lefty a chance to act. He stayed there. You didn't, so we followed you. One little mistake. One little mistake, Jackson. That's all it takes to lose a crooked game. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. <laughs> yes, King, we have our man. Thanks to the way you spotted Grogan in the fog and rescued me from the stream, this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's program. Now here's fair warning. Our big, easy Quaker Puff Wheat and Rice contest will be over before you know it. Don't miss your chance to win a bike. A brand new Schwinn Deluxe Auto Cycle that's yours fully equipped. Enter now, but fast. Finish this sentence in 15 words or less. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice package is... Finishing that sentence is easy. Look for the flags on the back of the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package. Pick out the one you like best and write down why on a piece of paper. Here's an example. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package is California. I like it because I want to go to school there someday. And be sure to add your name and address to entry. And send with one box top from Quaker puffed wheat or rice to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Contest closes midnight Saturday, October 23rd. Anyone living in continental United States may enter, except employees of the Quaker Oats Company, their advertising agencies, and families. Entries judged on basis of originality, suitability, and aptness. Duplicate prizes for ties. Judge's decision final. All entries and ideas therein become property of the Quaker Oats Company. Just make sure to get your entry off before it's too late. Mail today without delay to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Fred Flowerday. This story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of... The Mine of Good Hope. When a young prospector, Paul Dupree, disappeared, I never expected to come up against crooks as clever as those involved. They planned a trap for King and me that would mean death to both of us. Believe me, I shudder to think of what could have happened to us in the old mine shaft. You'll like this story of suspense and intrigue, so be sure not to miss it. Be sure to hear this exciting story Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>